Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So as you know, R20 came out and uh, we got node-based material finally. And uh, I'm sure you've seen all kinds of videos where people create uh, different materials using nodes and uh, show you, showing you how this works pretty much. Uh, but in this video, instead of showing you how each node works, I just want to cover the nodes that are really important and you're going to be using them all the time over and over again. Uh, so let's just jump in. Uh, so I just created the material, as you can see, a node-based material, a double click, and it takes us to this uh, basic setup uh, that you start from. Uh, so obviously, the material and the diffuse color, you're going to be using them and adding them all the time. So if you want to add, for example, another diffuse or, you know, Beckman and so on, you will go in here and just click Add, and it will give you another BSDF layer. Or you can click on this arrow, surface, BSDF, and it will automatically add another layer uh, to the stack. So now you have two different diffuse layers. Uh, the next thing is uh, if you click C, sometimes it glitches out. So let me just close this. There you go. If you click C, it will bring up your, uh, I think it's called Command, Node Commander. And here you can look up all the nodes. In Cinema 4D right now, there's like 100 plus nodes, and uh, you're not going to be using all of them all the time. Uh, but the useful ones are obviously like, for example, ambient occlusion. So what you can do with ambient occlusion is, uh, let me just move over here. You can take the ambient occlusion and uh, take, for example, color node. You type in color, and you guessed it. You would take ambient occlusion, take your color for example this green and blend them together and uh, and put them inside the color for the main material or the uh, the first BSDF layer so if you just look up layer or blend layer lets you blend multiple inputs and blend is only for two inputs so if you just do uh, for the foreground you would do this uh, green color and uh, for the background you would do ambient occlusion and then in here you would just multiply the two and plug this inside the color channel and now you get ambient occlusion uh, multiplied on top of uh, uh, the color and so on. Uh, so the blend node you're going to be using it a lot if you're blending for example a noise and a color or ambient occlusion and a color and other things. Uh, the next thing is obviously the layer channel or the layer node you're going to be using this all the time. As you can see, we can get in here. We have our uh, basic blending nodes. Uh, we can add all kinds of layers, as you can see here, as many as we can, and uh, plug all this stuff in and make it really complex material. And then result can, be, can go anywhere. You can control the color. You can control roughness, normal, intensity, bump maps, and so on. Uh, so layer node, you're going to be using a lot. Uh, make sure you uh, master this one. Uh, the another, another one that's useful is obviously gradient. So if you do a basic gradient or a normal gradient, you have all kinds of options in here. And uh, it's all, all the stuff that we used to before. Uh, what, you, what you can do is obviously blend this together. Uh, for example, let me add another uh, BSDF uh, layer. So let me just delete this one. Click add, oops, click this little arrow, add BSDF, switch this to Beckman. And uh, for example, uh, for the Fresnel, uh, do dielectric, and it goes like a clear coat on top of the white color, this diffuse. And now what you can do is search for blend. See, uh, it's now the C is not working again, so I have to close and reopen. Click C and uh, search for blend. Or you can do layer, it doesn't matter. Blend. Drop this here. Put the result in the uh, foreground color or the background color. Or you can uh, uh, blend uh, like two different noises and then I use this uh, gradient as like a mask. Yeah, yeah, so let's just do that. Obviously, noise is another one that's uh, really useful. You're going to be using it a lot. So let's take this noise, put it in the foreground color, and we'll just Command C, Command V, uh, and switch this up to like electric, and put this inside 
background color. Uh, let's bring up the low clipping. And to blend these two together, we're going to use this gradient. And let's do, instead of doing linear, uh, let's do a circle. And we can invert the knots. So now, as you can see, we're getting a nice blend. And then from here, we can plug this inside, for example, intensity of uh, the Beckman layer. And as you can see right now, if I bump up the IOR here, let's do like 10 so you can see what's going on. Uh, the reflection is not as uh, clean as before. As you can see, we're getting like noise, uh, our noise on top of the uh, intensity of the Beckman. Uh, so that's what you can do uh, when it comes to uh, using noises and blending gradients as using it as masks. Another thing you can use as, as a mask uh, which is not going to work for uh, a sphere. We actually need some kind of mesh, uh, but you can do triplanar, or not triplanar, you can do, um, I think it's a curvature, I think, curvature. Let's see. We have scratches, cut out. Yeah, I guess, I guess this one doesn't have curvature, but you can use ambient occlusion as your uh, blending and as your mask. You can use curvature. I don't know, maybe it's called something else uh, in this... Uh, in Cinema 4D's uh, node base material. Uh, but anyway, let's just uh, keep going. Uh, so you have your noise, you're going to be using it all the time. Blend, all the time. A layer, you're going to be using it all the time. And then uh, another thing is the image and the color correction. Uh, so if you search for image, generate image. In here, what you can do is plug in any image you want. So I'm just, just going to plug in this HDRI map. Uh, let's see, just wait for it to load up. And then uh, you can just uh, plug this inside the color. And in between, another node that you're going to be using a lot is, uh, as you can see, it says insert uh, converter. Uh, so where you can insert this color and then color correction. And you guessed it, it kind of becomes like a Photoshop layer. You can play around with your hue, as you can see. Um, saturation value and uh, different blends. Uh, so, you know, color correction, you're going to be color correcting your stuff instead of going to Photoshop, you can do it here. Uh, image nodes, obviously you can uh, blur out your images here, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can uh, play around with the alphas, plug in any image you want and so on. So you're going to be using this uh, a lot as well. Uh, let's just keep going, uh, looking at these nodes. Uh, but another thing is, obviously you probably guessed it, is... Uh, uh, bump maps. So bump maps, you're going to be using it a lot to give imperfections in your uh, textures. As you can see, it's glitched out again. It's not letting me drag in the bump map. So I'll just close, reopen, bump map. Still not working. That's so weird. Let's try here. Bump, bump map. There you go. And then from here, as you guessed it, you can do noise. Get that in there, plug it inside the value of the bump, and plug in, for example, into the normal of uh, the Beckman layer. As you can see, we're getting a nice bump on top of our texture. Uh, so bump and uh, noise and gradients, it's kind of like really common nodes that you're going to be using all the time. Uh, so just remember those. Another one, as you probably can guess, is displacement. If you type in displacement map, drag that one in, and then do another noise. Let's do basic noise for this one. Plug this one in. This goes inside displacement. And as you can see, it's a similar result. And then from there, you can obviously do any displacement you want. Uh, so displacement, bump maps, and uh, all those nodes, you're going to be using it a lot. The conversion nodes, you know, come in handy, but it's kind of really like it becomes handy when it's uh, really complex. Shape, uh, you can be used that as well as a mask. Uh, ambient occlusion, like I already covered. The generators, let's see what else is here. Uh, flakes can be used uh, to uh, give imperfections in your uh, reflections and so on. Uh, grid is, is, a, is a pretty cool thing. You can uh, generate, let's just drag this one in. You can generate a different grid and maybe use it, use it as a mask as well. As you can see, we can play around 
with all kinds of stuff. Let me just put it to one. I think it's too big. One one. Mm. Let's try maybe 0. 0.5. Yeah, I think one is too big as well. So you can generate a grid, play around with fill and line, and uh, pretty much get a nice alpha for your uh, one of your textures that you're creating. Uh, let's see what else. Different surfaces like uh, wood and rock is is nice as well. You have all kinds of options in here, uh, vein intensity and so on. So they they can be useful sometimes. Uh, but the basic nodes like uh, you know your noise gradients, uh, layer blend, and then what else you have? Uh, bump maps and displacement. You're gonna be using those all the time. And uh, if you can master those, all the other layers or or the all the other nodes kind of come in handy uh, from situation to situation. So you don't have to remember all 100 nodes to create something inside the new uh, node-based material. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully you learn uh, something uh, from this video. Uh, just remember, uh, you don't have to you know all the nodes to do something inside uh, the node-based material. Uh, just remember these basic nodes, and I think you should uh, do just fine. And uh, if you want to watch videos how to connect nodes and well those where, uh, there's so many videos out there. Uh, you can just watch and uh, learn from that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, please subscribe to my channel, and have a nice day, guys. Uh, goodbye.